Man, everybody has their own lane now. That's what I love. I love the place the hip hop's in now. I know one of the comments I kept reading uh, in that Kendra Lamar post from the other day was people had issue with the fact that you were saying that Kendrick did it in a weak era. And it's like, if we look at the albums that came out in those eras, or the times that uh, Kendrick came out, which would be what, 2012, 15, and 17? Or was that 13? I'm tripping. Either one, one of the two. But um, yeah, I mean, you just look at the pool of, of albums that came out. People hadn't found their identities yet. And other people were saying that there hasn't been an album as good as Damn since Damn was released. I beg to differ. First of all, that's not true. That's not true. Second of all, everything that we're saying is spot on. The era that he's been dominating has been weak. We can go look at the music. We can just go look at the music, Mike. In the last, in the time that we've been doing this podcast, which will be two years next month, we've seen better albums come out in this two-year span than his whole run. No, that's real. And that's just the fact of the matter. That's I'm not real. saying it. I'm not saying it in some sort of slightest fashion or to lessen his reign. <clears throat> I'm going to say this again. In the Book of Kings, in the Bible, Mike, there's good kings and there's bad kings. And a lot of your kingdom has to do with the time when you reign. Yeah. It's that simple. Because at this point, you know, you would somewhat be, let's just keep it real. If he was coming out around this time, he would be pretty much forced to collaborate with the pool of people who are doing their thing right now and that are in full stride. And Mm -hmm. I don't think that would be as dominant as it looked a couple years ago. Here's what I will give him, and it's something that I noticed with the Saba album, because it was my one uh, critique of the Saba album. Mm -hmm. A little feature heavy again. A little feature heavy. I mean, it's great features. The the features do a good job of blending, and most of it sounds organic. But, you know, also one of those things, most of your great MCs, at least the ones that are all-time great, are proven on that solo mission, where it's like, well, you hear them take flight really by themselves, and so... Kendrick is one of those people that did that successfully because that's what Good Kid, Mad City is. It's him taking flight successfully by himself. I mean, how many verses are on there? We got a Dre verse, a J Rock verse, and a Drake verse. Yeah, uh, you're gonna like this comment. Jack seven 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 says, "No, but no, but who's dropped a better album than To Pimp a Butterfly since 2015?" Here we go with this over. Go ahead. Talk about To Pimp a Butterfly, and is it that superior that in seven years no one has dropped an album in hip-hop okay. better than To Pimp a Butterfly? Okay, so here's what I mean. Like, when you're saying better than To Pimp a Butterfly, like, on what level are you talking about? Are you talking about on the level that it was put together? Because on the level that it was put together, I think the album that's most comparable to it is Pray for Paris since then. If we're talking about how beautiful something is that's been put together, Okay. Do I think Pray for Paris is a better album than To Pippa Butterfly? No, I do not. Which album am I going to play? Which album are people going to play? And which album has more replay value? All of those things belong to Pray for Paris. And so, like, <clears throat> Kendrick made a very, very special thing with To Pimp a Butterfly because the integrity of the project and the bones of the project are better than the project. Like the artistic integrity of the project is better than the music itself because he paints a picture so clearly of what he's doing and where he's going. But the replay value is just not there, Mike. It's just not. And and you can say what you want about how great it is. The greatest albums of all time have inherent replay value to them. So we need to be careful about like like grandiose in this album and in some stratosphere that it really doesn't belong in as a classic. Is it a classic? Yes. Masterful piece of work, of course. Wonderfully and beautifully put together. About as well as you can put an album together outside of a Quimini or It Takes a Nation of Millions or The Chronic 2001. Like it's up there in terms of how it's put together. But the music, Mike, the music ain't like that. Like I said, y'all ain't running around playing to pimp a butterfly when we're getting off into his catalog. You are playing the stuff on Damn and on Good Kid Mad City. You are playing Backseat Freestyle. You know when Backseat Freestyle come on, you still play it. You know when some of that stuff on the pimp a butterfly come on, you be like, ah, great record. Not the day next. You know, it's interesting, man. And I'm a big proponent of To Pimp a Butterfly. You know that. Anybody who's watched the show knows that. Uh, when I first heard To Pimp a Butterfly, I, I listened to it 
before I like, you know, I I wouldn't listen to it with a fresh set of ears, right? I didn't go on social media, I didn't see what anybody had said about it. And on first listen, first my first listen, I was like, this is the best hip hop album I've heard since Supreme Clientele. That was my first listen, right? And again, I sit back and I think I get real nerdy about listening to the Pimper Butterfly to, to Pimper Butterfly. And I'm listening to it from a creator standpoint almost. Right. Like I'm listening to it as I guess as the former artist I used to be, right? Exactly. That never goes away. But just how he was able to put together this piece, how well it comes together, musically where it's at, lyrically where he's at, his versatility on there. One of the knocks, on, and you know what? One of the knocks I have on it is King Kunta. I think that was not a strong single and it's not even a strong song on the album. Um, and I think one of the brilliant moments to for to Pepper Butterfly is them using the live version of I. I that was a game changer. Uh, that is much better than the actual recorded version. Uh, similar to like, you know, Common the Food would be, right? But, you know, you brought up something while we've been doing this show and I hold to Pepper Butterfly super high. Its replay value is minuscule. Of all the great albums that I've ever heard and that I hold it to a level of uh, like on a craftsmanship level I don't listen to it as much as I do those others and and when you sit back and think about it Kendrick doesn't even hold this album high he sat there with Big Boy uh, out in LA and he had To Pimp a Butterfly ranked third in his catalog I think it was that was disappointing for me I'm like okay well does he feel that way as an artist or is he listening to the people? Either way, it's an indictment on that album and its level of greatness as well. You know what I'm saying? If if that if he's feeling the love how certain people like us might feel about To Pimp a Butterfly, he doesn't rank it number three. He's so, ranking that number three off of some of the stuff that you're saying that the people aren't playing it. So there's a few things that I want to unpack about what you said. The first thing that you said that struck a chord with me was when you spoke to the artist in you and how you looked at it. Well, that's who this album really resonated with. Because I remember when this album came out, all, all my artsy friends, Mike, no matter what medium they were operating in or what genre, so to speak. I'm talking about my artist friends, musical right. artists, uh, actual musicians, vocalists. Painters, sketchers, graffiti artists, skate. Oh, everybody that I knew in those circles. Oh, they think that album is so masterful. And da, 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 da. yeah, so it's great for that crowd in that circle when you want to riff off into those things and the nuances and nerdy parts of rap and what he's so great at. But on a fundamental level, it's just not as great and enjoyable to listen to as the albums that he probably have ahead of it in this order, which is Good Kid, Mad City, and Damn. And then to Pimp a Butterfly, because at the end of the day, Kendrick knows it's about the music. Like, Mike, I love how much does a dollar cost. Yeah. I think it's one of the most beautiful hip hop records that I've ever heard. I almost never play it. And there's plenty of times when it comes on and I skip it because I'm just not in the mood. Even though I know how brilliant it is, I know what the story is about, I know where he's going. I know how in awe I was the first time I heard it. Replay value is just not as strong as it should be. It doesn't hit you the way that it does. Like that, that, how about that? That story on a writer's level is comparable to Stan or I gave you power, but the replay value is not there. You know, and, and it's very puzzling to me, and I'm still trying to figure it out. Um, shout out to Ron Vey out there, man. Ron Vey told me something. I think this might have been sometime last year or whatever, but he actually has done a hip hop musical and has produced it, written it with his co uh, writing partner. Mm -hmm. And I saw the play. I, well, I saw a demo of it. It was incredible. But anyway, mm -hmm. he said, you know, To Pimp a Butterfly is like a stage play, like theater. It yes. literally is. And then when I listen to it from that standpoint, I'm like, okay, well, this opens up a whole nother door where I have to listen to this album kind of differently, right? Uh, but still, those, when you look at things from a theatrical standpoint, Everything comes together. And so individual songs, they might not be as strong on their own, but they're strong in the piece, if that makes any sense. 
you know, I'm actually going to quote somebody who is not going to be surprised who I'm quoting, but you want to know what my thoughts was on, on To Pimp a Butterfly? Yes. Actually, Mike, it's actually a quote that Nas has on success. You know what, what I'm talking about? Mm, I'm trying to run that through my head. That's my least favorite collaboration of theirs, other than Mike the DJ goes, Khaled one. Goes Ghetto Othello. Sugar Hill Romello, Camaro driven. I climaxed off paper, then asked why is life worth living? Is it the hunt for the shit that you want to receive great, but I lust given? That's Kendrick's mentality on to pimp a butterfly. Great mentality, not great repay value. Yeah, it's probably the best hip hop album that I don't play. I hate great. to say it like that. The greatest, the greatest rap album ever made with the least rap replay value, Mike. All the albums that it should get compared to. That's what I mean. It's like, are you talking about like a piece of art or a work of art? Oh, yeah. But if you're talking about like on some just rap, like like what tracks is like hitting? Like, no, it's not. It, but you know what? I think it's an incredible follow up to uh, Good Kid, Mad City. Because you can't say it's a flop, you know what I'm saying? No, like you just can't machine. look at it in that way. And I think if you wanna, if you wanna follow up something with so much fanfare and um, so much hype as a good kid, Mad City, this is the way to do it. Yeah, no, no, no. He did the right thing because what he didn't do was try to create something in the vein of Good Kid, Mad City because he knew how that resonated with people in the culture. So he did veer off properly. I'm just saying the music just like like I think element and feel off damn is just better to hear on a replay consistent basis than everything on to pimp a butterfly. Just those two records. You know, damn it sounded than... like he really found himself on there. Yeah. That's another thing why it's disappointing why we haven't heard from him so long. Because MC wise, Mike, he was at his zenith actually on damn as an MC. Yeah, he was able to do a lot of things. Um uh, and again, he had his own sound where it was like I could tell on To Pimp a Butterfly there were certain things that he was trying to do, right? Mm -hmm. um, but he sounded the most comfortable on Damn. I don't, and when I listen to Good Kid Mad City now, he doesn't sound comfortable all the time on there, right? Like, it sounds like I made some of these for the radio. I had to make some of these for this. Um, but Damn just sounds very fluid for him, all the way down to Loyalty. Love is probably one of my favorite records on there. And he just sounds comfortable through and through on that album. You don't think he sounds comfortable on Good Kid, Mad City? Not, not all the way through. I you're think. Talking, are you talking like technically as an MC? Is that what you're talking about? I don't think he wanted to make poetic justice. I don't feel like he wanted. You know what I mean? Like as an artist, it's like I certain. He, I, th I think. How about this? I think it is the making of songs like Swimming Pools and Poetic Justice that led to the thought process of wanting to make Pimp a Butterfly. So those records are necessary. Yeah. Yeah. No, they are. Yeah. Um, and he's comfortable on those records. You don't think he's comfortable? He is, but I could tell with... I mean, I mean he I'm, is to a degree. I could tell damn are the records that he wanted to make. Right. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Like, there, there are records on Good Kid Mad City. He's trying to make records for people to get to where he desires to be on Good Kid Mad City, but that's part of the beauty of it. He's ambitious, and he's pulling it off. Yeah. I mean, I could say the same thing about To Pimp a Butterfly, but I think on a technical level, To Pimp a Butterfly is definitely next level to me. Um, in relation to the other projects. I remember, um, and this is after Damn came out. It's probably like right around the time Damn came out. I was listening to uh, Abstract Radio, and they played These Walls. And that was just confirmation for me that, like, musically, To Pimp a Butterfly is on a whole nother level. Can I tell you something? I never loved These Walls. Really? Like that. I like, I mean, this is what I mean about it. This is like, so, it's like, you know... <clears throat> The script reads like beautiful literature, but in this spectrum, you have to entertain. And so so on a stage play level, that's what I mean. It's just like, oh, well, it's kind of like kind of like Macbeth. It's like it's got a lot of highlights to it. But if you've actually seen the play from beginning to end, that shit kind of boring. That's what I'm trying I to say. I think it's the best and album he's ever can, made. Um, and you can, and I want to speak to something real quick. You can be lyrically dense and be entertaining. See, follow the leader. See Liquid Swords. See Illmatic. It can be done. So he did not pull that off. And that's why I don't hold it as high. Well, yeah. I, and again, I guess I'm viewing it from a different lens. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, but I see what you're saying. And obviously the proof's in the pudding because the artist himself ranked this as third. And I doubt he did that because, you know, of how 
he feels about it. I truly believe, I mean, I have no way of knowing this, but I truly believe that after Kendrick Lamar recorded To Pimp a Butterfly, he truly believed that that was the best piece of work he ever made. I don't As dispute. he should. No, I don't, I, and I don't dispute that sentiment. But, you know, but see, the, the reaction from the people, those right. are things that you can't quantify until it's a, actually out there. You know, so you can sit there and listen to that in your headphones forever and forever. But until you get that out to the people and you see how the people receive it. And I think that the way the people received it or lack thereof to Pimp a Butterfly on a massive level in relation to Damn and Good Kid Mad City, it affects how he views to Pimp a Butterfly himself. Well, look, that, that goes back to the entertainment value. How about this? If it's not better, then it needs to be entertaining enough to put the project that came out before it on the shelf for a little bit longer than it did. That's what I'm saying. It's like I, I listened to Pimp a Butterfly, Mike, for about a month, and then I found myself wanting to hear Good Kid, Mad City again if I wanted to hear Kendrick. That means that album wasn't all-time great, like people say. And and I'll go to albums from from some artists that we have argued about frequently on here. Well, it was written in volume one are dope enough and the MCs are there are dope enough to make you put their previous project up for a while, even though those projects are better and it's clear in your mind. They're still dope enough on the next project that you're like, no, 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 we can shelf that for a minute. This guy going crazy on here. You hear what this guy's saying? That's not going on on To Pimp a Butterfly. It's not I, it going on for me. All. It did for me. I mean, To Pimp a Butterfly oh, made oh, me oh, put the key down. How, 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 how long? For how long? I mean, for how... Uh, listen, I think that it made me put it down longer than it was written made me put down Illmatic. See, that's the thing, though, and I don't think you're big on Good Kid, Mad City like I am, though. Like, like I'm those not. records. Yeah, like, I love Master Splinter, Shireen's Daughter, Bitch Don't Kill My Vibe, Real, Money Trees, like, Backseat Freestyle Mike. I just named, like, three or four of his best ten records, in my opinion. I think I might... I mean, I, with, with Kendrick, I kind of just go with records because he's one of the guys that if I play one song, I probably have to play the whole album. Good Kid, Mad City's kind of like the only one in its catalog that's not like that, where I could play individual songs. But if I play something from Section 80, I probably end up listening to the whole thing. But that's why Good Kid, Mad City is special, Mike, because it's like he's putting a story together. But when you section off the stories, they still sound beautiful by themselves. That's a hard pull off. Like, that's why. OK, so what are Kendrick's five best songs to you? Because I think three of them are on Good Kid, Mad City, probably at least two. Damn, Kendrick's five best songs. Yeah, That's what, what hard, it, man. I mean, the first that came to mind when you said that, uh, I love Black of the Berry. Okay. It's not on mine. I okay. love um, not hood politics. You know what I'm talking about? Um, uh, it's on to Pimple Butterfly as well. See, there we go. But Mike, you can't remember the name of the song. No, 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 no. It's uh, <laughs> now, I, Hood politics is in my head. You know what okay. I'm saying? But uh, Mom said, you talking about Mama said, you ain't got a lot? I love that record, too. You ain't got yeah. a lot is great. Oh, all these records are great, but Mike... These like, walls is up there for me, too. No, this is what I'm saying. So, But, you so, know, this is the thing with me and... Uh, yeah, Hood Politics. That Yeah, that is the song. Okay. I mean, None for me, for me, I like when Kendrick is spazzing on a record, right? Like, I like when he goes in. So... That's why I like hood politics like that. I like Black of the Berry. I think the no, way, I get what you're saying. Yeah. You like, you like I like his approach to that. I, I'd rather hear Kendrick rhyming like that than rhyming like on swimming pools or you know. I mean, I like all right for that. You know, what I'm saying sentiment too because he's going in. I like when he rap yes. raps, and okay. so Phil would be up there for me. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like I like when he That's takes the it there. That's the first record you've named that would be in mind. Would be Feel. So Feel's there for me. Like as much as I like DNA and songs like that, and they they play well, but I like personally when Kendrick goes for it on the mic. Uh, no, no. ADHD is up there for me too. Shout out uh, to DiCarlo. I love yeah. that. That was one of the first. And even though he's that's killing, one of those make you a fan songs. Yeah, exactly. Even though he's killing rigor mortis and all that, which I thought was super impressive, but like you said, it's the replay value on that. ADHD was one of those that, like you said, made me a fan. Early. Christian Corinthians. Now, I like Mad City, too. Okay. Um, and I like Money Trees. Okay. 
That's what uh, I'm so, saying. So, all right. So, if I'm naming, I'm getting together my top five as we speak. So, I would have to include Money Trees. I would have to include uh, Mad City. I would have to include Hood Politics. I would have to include ADHD and maybe throw in Black or the Berry. But again, that's not set in stone. That's just off the top of my head. Okay, off the top of my head, definitely Money Trees and Real of Good Kid Mad City are getting in there. Money Trees and Real are his. Are Did his I say th- Phil? No, nah, I could. I, I'm putting Phil in there too, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. I was about to say after Money Trees and Real, I'm going to Phil actually. Mm-hmm. Um. After that, there's a few different places to go. I can go. Bitch, don't kill my vibe. I can go. Element. I can go. How much a dollar costs? Somewhere in there for me right there but what i'm saying that to say i just named stuff from damn and good kid mad city and one record from to pimp a butterfly though because that's how i feel about to pimp a butterfly just on, on on a song on a song level it's just how much a dollar cost to me is just so it's just so masterful it's a master class you know it's like okay let's let me see. get to the super chat real quick uh shout out to ray realms always showing love in the super chat uh he says uh why do you guys believe that kendrick and cole album hasn't happened um, they said that they have many songs in the tuck. I mean, y'all, you want a Kendrick and Cole project? We're not even getting any Kendrick music. It's not 2015 anymore. You know, this is my per my um. Let it go. <laughs> now, nah, you know what my answer to that question is? Why I don't think it has happened? Because I don't think the songs are that good, and I don't think that the stuff that Kendrick is uh, putting together right now is any good either. Um, you, you know, think that everybody material though, Mike. Why do you think that when people don't release material, sometimes it's just not right? Like Jewels and Wayne had stuff together. You don't think any of that stuff was dope, and that's why we didn't see it. Or yeah, it's happen? a little different. Okay. It's a little different. These guys are two of the biggest in the game, man. Like, you know what I mean? Wayne and, and Jewels, what happened? That's why I'm, I'm, that's why I reference Wayne and Jewels because it's like I don't know. Wayne and Jewels was pretty big when I was supposed to go. Wayne was super big. Jewels had a core following, but it Jewels, was. I mean, a lot of was, people. It, it, Jewels it, like he had next for all the young guns coming out of New York, and that means something in hip hop. So Jewels was, wasn't Cole or Kendrick. Let's be real. But he was positioned as such. You, you don't think he was positioned as like the, the young dude? Oh shit! Nah. We missed what I'm missing. He had <laughs> showing up the video shoots, Mike. I Let mean, me go to KD super chat real quick. He said. Um, Y'all speak that. on that new uh, Snoop album yet? We get it was it. surprisingly good. The game, Nas, all great features on that album. The Curb sample was hilarious. The Kirby enthusiasm sample was hilarious. Yes, it was. We're about to get to it. We're gonna get to that. We're gonna talk about that in a second. I think we got another super chat. Just because you be super chatting, don't be stealing our material and stuff on the bar, <laughs> ma'am. Don't do that just because you super chat. Appreciate you. Let's go. Appreciate the super chat from Jay Short. He says, uh, "I predicted." We have seen um, the last Kendrick of the last of Kendrick Lamar. I think he meant to say of. You know what? No, no, no. I don't. We don't bury MCs around here. Not MCs of that caliber. He's not done. He's not done. What I'm saying is what he needs. I keep. I'm going to keep on saying the same thing. Listen to the words that are coming out of my mouth. He needs to make something at least comparable to damn in this climate. Uh, you know what? I was saying that too, but after listening to this Snoop album, man, I'm like, you know what, Kendrick? You need to just go out here and have some fun, man. Because for whatever's going on, this five year break, you're taking it too serious to the point where you're not even able to have no fun with no hip hop shit. Like, I, that's what I heard in this Snoop album. And he was Snoop never just a fun put out. Artist. Huh? He was never a fun artist. There are moments on Section 80 and Good Kid, Mad City that are fun, but after that, it's really not fun. He's not that guy. Yes, Snoop has that luxury of being able to do that and have some fun with it. But you know what? When I say fun, the f- kind of fun that Nas had on Magic. Just have some, like, dude, we don't, you don't have to go out here and make a theatrical piece. You've done that. Just get on some beats and rhyme. No, I told you. The fun matters. I told you. What did I say when I heard KD one? And I was like, "Hey, I was like, Mike, do you hear Nas having fun?" I was like, it's, "I was like, I was like, did he make spicy in Twenty Seven Summers?" I was like, "Is he having fun? Is he enjoying life yeah. and celebrating?" And it's okay. Is it is it okay? Yes, it is okay. I keep trying to tell you. So I listen, man. This your favorite rappers used to have fun, Mike. Just have fun. 
Did you so hear that uh, new 504? You can have serious all the time. Like, you can have fun sometimes. Tupac had fun. Biggie had fun. Jay had fun. Nas had fun. Rakim had fun. I think that's what Kendrick needs to do at this point, but maybe yeah. maybe yeah. the time for that is kind of over. Yeah, it's a fun Slick Rick. Definitely had a bunch of fun, Mike. Slick Rick. A lot of greats. LL, fun. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, had some good times. J. Cole's having fun right now. <laughs> he party on, on the mic right now. And people are running J. Cole's around having fun. Benny. People are running around talking to, talking about Benny got bodied on the track now, Mike. I called it a draw. People are like, no, no, no. Cole bodied him. Nah, Cole did like, his thing right there. Yeah. I was like, he didn't body him. He didn't body him. Y'all need to stop with the body him because Benny's wordplay is too exquisite on there. No, no, he didn't body him, but you know, you know, we, we exaggerate. He does right. have the better. That's voice. A1 MC wordplay out of Benny and delivery though. So just because Cole had a moment and may have edged him out, it's like, oh, he didn't body him though. I mean, it's a dope song, you know, dope two record. dope MCs putting out dope verses. So yeah, yeah. um, listen, this is what I will say. Snoop just dropped an album that we're about to talk about. Yeah. Mary J. Blige just dropped an album. Did she? Yeah, she did. Oh, you want to know what? My, I saw the homie post that on Facebook this morning. Talking about it's going to be a good day. Uh, what's her name? Dropped Hotels today, too. That's my homie Mackie from high school. She uh, she had dropped the line on Facebook today. Uh, what's her name? Jasmine Sullivan, I think. Yeah, yeah Jazz, Jazz dropped today, too. So Mary dropped. Dr. Dre dropped some songs like two weeks ago. Um, and Dr. Dre never drops any songs. And uh, Eminem, he's out here selling spaghetti in L.A. Kendrick, what is going on? What is going on, Kendrick? Well, uh, did, you, did you get a thread saying, looks like Kendrick may be dropping something on Friday? <laughs> and he texted me, sending it to me, and you're like, it's not going to happen. <laughs> it did not happen. No, yeah. that's why I didn't text you this morning. Because I pulled up, woke up this morning. I was like, oh, I was like, no, I was like, I'm not messing with Mike till after. I'm like calling Mike in the midday. I'm not even hitting him in the morning. I mean, look, man, the the reality of the situation is it's the Super Bowl. And like Mary said, like people can make money off of the Super Bowl, like from here on out. Like this is a lifetime opportunity, especially if you're dropping new material, especially if you're that artist that is in the prime of their career. Mary is performing free, Mike. If Kendrick is not dropping any music, during or before the Super Bowl, it's not coming, guys. It's, it's nowhere near done. Like, he's not even dropping a single. Like, let's just say hypothetically, he's in the lab, right? And let's just say that the project's not completed, not done, or whatever. Oh, my God. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's just say it's not done, right? But I do have an idea, and I got some songs that I want to tease people with, whatever, whatever. We would hear that by now. All eyes are on the legends and Kendrick that are going to be on that stage at the Super Bowl Sunday. Like, everybody's going to be watching. It's the, most, it's the highest rated event, period, in the world, so annually. My, and I mean, you ain't dropping no music, you don't have the music. Either that, either he doesn't have the music, which I find hard to believe, but the shit is trash. People talk about my rant. See, you get brief with your rants, but you be saying some very felonious stuff. Okay. What did I say wrong? Because because I've already told you this. His <laughs> real, real deadline is it's like, okay, when the Super Bowl, Mike? It's Sunday. What's today? It's Friday. Yeah, he so on. I mean, you think he dropping Sunday? I mean, Mike, he on. You know, we got first forty eight. Oh, he on the last forty eight. That's <laughs> really where we at. I mean, if you really want to know how I feel, it's like, yeah, I've been campaigning for you, low key, for a minute, but I'm gonna need you to drop some music. And he has not dropped the music. Now, man, Eminem will drop some music before we him. saw. We saw LeBron bobbing his headphones last training camp in the summertime. Talking about some Kendrick music on the way. Did we not? Did we not have this guy just pop up talking about some new Kendrick music on the way? So I say all that to say he's been recording. All right? Yeah. Now, now here's now here's what I think. Because he's an artist, artist, and artist types of artists are drawn to him. That's why you and I are drawn to him too. And we're sick of him not doing material after five years. But he might have something in the can and he might have outworked himself in terms of this climate has changed so much even in the two years that we have done this podcast 
that a lot of that great material that was great that he probably been recording maybe did not sound so great after, I don't know, three to six months went by. You got to act fast. No, you're right. Let me get to some of these super chats real quick. And I'm going to get back to what you're saying because I think that is very potent. Uh, KD steal says the, bars, don't steal our bars. We don't want your super chat. Go. <laughs> KD says that uh, the pulser and the hipsters gas Kendrick's ego up. Uh, Tabotnit says that I love you guys, but... He said, I love you guys, but uh, Kendrick will drop an album within the next month. I'll give you $50 uh, to this dope channel if it doesn't happen. Yeah, get go ready. ahead and send the 50 Now, it's not get ready happening. To send us $50. If you want the money to get there in a more expeditious <laughs> fashion, you can just go. Yeah, you can just send that app. to the cash app. Right, yeah, right, 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 right. I would like that before Super Bowl Sunday to gamble with after he doesn't drop anything new at halftime. <laughs> and I have to tuck my tail between my legs and come back to Mike again and come up with some bogus explanation for why he hasn't dropped material like I've been doing for the last two years. Antonio says, uh, if Kendrick doesn't drop an album within the week of the Super Bowl, he will fumble this perfect opportunity. I agree. <laughs> Not everybody gets an opportunity to perform on the Super Bowl stage. Especially being able to perform on the Super Bowl stage in the prime of your career next to Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg. What more could... You know what I'm saying? You remember when they crowned him the next oh, king God. of L.A.? Now, you remember he came out to Coach, at Coachella during Dre's set. This was oh. the opening of that whole Good Kid, Mad City buzz. Like, how do you squander an opportunity like this? At this point, I feel like you're the status of, you know what? I'm a legend. I don't need to put out any more music. Is that where Kendrick is? No, no, no. Damn all that, Mike. I just realized something. Why isn't Kendrick on Snoop's album? He's not on anybody's album. Like, didn't Snoop just drop an album? Ain't y'all about to be on stage on Sunday? Didn't Snoop just buy Death Row? Ain't this West West, y'all? I done told you how they rep out there, Mike. He's not on anybody's I, album. No, no. Everybody out there know what I'm talking about. You know how they rep, Mike? Yeah. Yeah, they rap harder than anybody. Where is Ken? Why is Kendrick not on Snoop's album? I just thought about that. It's like, hold on, because this shit is dope too, Mike. This this is a dope Snoop album. It is dope. 